Hello chess friends and welcome to Azad of Chess Channel and welcome to our basics in chess series. So in this series we're following opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we're continuing with our middle game strategies again. Today we're continuing with our uh, knight, bishop and pawn strategies, uh, which I've explained already in my introduction video. So in order to get a better understanding of this particular video, please watch my first introduction video of this knight, bishop and pawn strategy. What I've talked about uh, in this video, in my introduction video, is this idea in chess uh, that you should really visualize uh, your uh, position differently than usually, than you used to uh, so far, because when we uh, watch the positions on the board, uh, we are always a little bit distracted by, uh, by our opponent's attacking possibilities, maybe with some queen moves, rook moves. But really, chess is all about knight, pawns and bishops, because... Uh, as I mentioned also in my previous video, the knight uh, and the bishop and pawn are really the strategical pieces on the board. So as I said, please watch this first video of my uh, knight, bishop and pawn series in order to get a better understanding of this particular video. So uh, we have now the idea uh, that uh, we should always evaluate the strength of our bishops, knights and our, of our pawn structures. Queens and rooks, on the other hand, uh, are... Uh, tactical pieces so it means when your opponent is trying some attacks uh, maybe we, we, he's trying to get the queen somehow into the game the good way is always to defend with your queen so basically it's a battle queen versus queen and rook versus rook so when the rook occupies maybe an open file then you should of course compete with that rook on an open file but these rooks are really not uh, strategical pieces because we are not building a strategy around this maybe open file we're building strategies by pawn structures and this uh, knights and bishops activity so when we have a bad bishop position and as i mentioned also in my previous video and some queens on the board again it means that it's a bad bishop position so we can play on onto that and uh, whenever we see positions we should always uh, try to uh, answer some questions one of the most important uh, questions that you should ask yourself which piece is good which piece is bad can this piece be improved or it's really bad um, or the other important question is what kind of a pawn structure uh, do we have in the center can this pawn structure change for instance we can have a blocked pawn structure then uh, the dynamics can change maybe this pawn structure will not be blocked uh, through the whole game maybe this pawn structure will be opened with some flank attack possibilities with maybe uh, some uh, attacks in the center so we should always evaluate the possibilities of an open game so that's why in an early stage it's not good uh, it's not good to give up maybe the bishop pair in an early, early stage of the game although the pawn structure is blocked in the center because maybe this position still can be opened and then you have some troubles because you don't have any more the bishops on the board so this is now our first exercise so i'll call it exercises this um, continuation of this series so we have now the first exercise and it's the game uh, between arthur pipers against oleg romanishin oleg romanishin with the black pieces so we are playing now oleg, uh, oleg romanishin's game let's first evaluate our strength of our pieces and as i mentioned we should first of all visualize this position differently than this position because first i want you to imagine this position without the queens and the rooks on the board so so far don't take care about your queens and or rooks first we should evaluate the strength of our knight of our bishops of the pawn structure so that's the whole idea about this pawn uh, knight and bishop strategy if we watch now this position without these rooks on the board so far i don't see a good way how this rooks the queen and uh, uh, maybe this pawns on the on the queen side and the king side could uh, create really some dangerous threats so so far it's really a battle between knights bishops and pawns so let's evaluate the strength of all of our minor pieces uh, this knight is perfectly fine because this knight uh, first of all will always find a way into the game uh, we have now the block pawn structure in the center so it means uh, these knights are of course flexible pieces uh, the knights are changing always uh, the color of the squares when you jump of course when you're jumping uh, with your knight here from a light square then you always jump on the next opposite color uh, square we are jumping on the dark square then again on the light square so the knight will probably always find a way into the game let's see this other knight the same thing also about this knight on b6 this knight is maybe not well placed immediately but it can find a way into the game let's evaluate this bishop's strength on f6 this bishop is bad because it's blocked out by its own pawn but still if we want to maybe go into positional trades of pieces 
we shouldn't immediately uh, give up maybe a bishop for a knight because although uh, the bishop here is not a good attacking piece the bishop on f6 it's not maybe used in, a, in the attack but it's a very important defensive piece now because if we for instance if you could just imagine give up this bishop for maybe this knight on f3 then we could face some dark square problems because your opponent will continue the game with the uh, bishop on a, uh, h6 and the queen so the queen and the bishop could build maybe a very nice battery which are again of course tactics so that's what i meant when we play with the queen then suddenly we have some tactical ideas when we are creating checkmate threats when we include this uh, queen in the attack so far our strategy is not to give up the dark square bishop for a knight but what we would love to do probably is maybe to give up this dark square bishop for this dark square bishop then we would get rid maybe of our bad bishop but uh, our opponent is uh, not continuing the game with uh, his dark square bishop so we could maybe protect the dark squares with some f6 moves and then we could continue the game very very nicely so let's see this bishop on b7 it's bad because it's blocked out by your opponent's pawn but believe me it's better that than uh, that your um, that your bishop is blocked out by your opponent's pawns than it's uh, then you have this bishop that it's blocked on uh, blocked out by your own pawn so it's better when your opponent blocks out your bishop because this bishop on b7 still can get into the game with maybe bishop to c8 and then followed with f5 because we have now this blocked pawn structure in the center we have a similar pawn structure like in the king's indian in the classical version then we could search maybe some dynamics with the move f5 so so far as i said in this pos positional trades of pieces it could be good maybe to give up this bishop for this bishop so far it's not good as i said to give up this bishop uh, for this knight or even for this knight what we want to do is now evaluate our opponent's possibility uh, and our opponent's strength of the minor pieces so uh, if we see these knights again the same idea these uh, knights are perfectly fine they will probably find a way into the game this bishop is perfectly fine because it attacks here the dark squares it's it has a good diagonal the only piece that's bad it's here the bishop on c2 so our strategy now is simply to play around this bishop on c2 what we w w uh, want to do maybe is activate our bad piece that could happen with some potential knight to f4 moves after bishop takes f4 and e takes f4 then this bishop suddenly would be the best minor piece on the board so our opponent will not probably also give up the bishop for a knight in this early stage of the game because then this dark square bishop is very active the c3 pawn is hanging so then if the position clears on the e file then suddenly uh, white could also face some troubles because of this uh, backward pawn on e4 so as said as a strategic idea we could go maybe uh, here with the move knight to f4 which could uh, of course create a very powerful outpost and the problem is as i said that your opponent cannot take uh, this knight with the bishop the other problem is if we place the knight on f4 it cannot be kicked away by the pawn on g3 because then the h3 pawn is hanging so black uh, pardon me white will need many many moves in order to maybe improve the position here and will uh, probably have to play something like king to h2 so when we talk about uh, now pawn structures when we talk about pawns so far this is a block pawn structure but i'm not sure if this pawn structure will be blocked through the whole game that's the problem maybe we could try some g3 f4 moves uh, by white then the position will be dynamic in the center or from black perspective of course uh, we could try some f5 moves i really like to talk really uh, so much about this position i hope to you don't mind because it's very important to realize and to understand these complex positions but if you see how oleg romanishin played this game he played this game uh, simply against this bishop on c2 so as i said our whole strategy can be based uh, around a one particular piece by our opponent so as i said the queen is not so important uh, so far of course there are maybe some ideas to attack with the queen but as i said the queens and the rooks are not strategical uh, pieces they are really these tactical pieces as i said if the queen and the bishop create a battery then we could have uh, face some tactical problems but so far from a strategy point of view this queen on d2 and this queen on d8 is not important to get our plan going so as i said we're playing simply against this bad bishop on c2 so this is our first exercise uh, knight to g3 was played 
uh, here by uh, Romanishi's opponent. So let's solve now the problem of this position. Should we take the knight or should we remove the knight? Of course, we don't want to uh, uh, allow our opponent to take the uh, knight on h5. Then we could have to, uh, we would have to take with g takes h5 then we would have some problems if this queen comes comes into the game we could even face some checkmate threats on the g file so that's why let's you can always pause the video and find now the best next move for black so in this game uh, oleg romanishin plays the very powerful knight to f4 again i'm pointing out giving up the dark square bishop is not such a powerful idea e takes f4 this bishop is liberated this couldn't be a good position for white so in the game knight to uh, e2 was played here by uh, arthur pipers and in this position oleg romanishin gets rid of it uh, one knight of the board after knight to um uh, knight to e2 we have uh, uh, rook takes e2 and let's now search for our main idea how to play uh, how to continue this position as i said we would love to give up maybe uh, the dark square bishop uh, here bishop to g5 or bishop to g7 uh, is our main uh, positional trades of pieces idea we would love to give up maybe the dark square bishops continue then with some bishop to c8 f5 ideas like in the common king's indian but in order to make something happen we have to take care also of our queen side and also of our king side so that's why here oleg romanishin plays a very powerful idea as i said we are playing against this bishop on c2 how to block this bishop further we have to create of course a very powerful pawn chain on dark squares for instance you see these pawns are on dark squares we would love to play something like b4 uh, maybe a5 then the position on the queen side will be cemented white is then forced maybe to build a pawn chain on light squares but then if that happens if white plays something like c4 then this bishop on c2 would be really really blocked out by its own pawns and then it would be really a bad bishop position so here in the game that's why oleg romanishin plays the very powerful a5 move you see how this whole strategy is simply built around as i'm repeating myself maybe too much but as i said the whole strategy is built around knight bishops and pawns so uh, here knight to h2 what white now wants to do is uh, of course to get rid of this very bad bishop so far but as i said as a defensive piece this piece is perfectly fine because uh, at least it protects our dark squares we have already played the move g6 we have to protect our dark squares here around the king so uh, that's why in the game oleg romanishin plays now a very very powerful idea so here i want you to pause the video and find really the best next move for black which move could prevent this idea knight to g4 and then still we are continuing with this bad bishop situation on c2 uh, because now suddenly i think the position has a little bit changed with the trades of uh, pawns because still it's a blocked pawn structure in the center here oleg romanishin plays the very powerful bishop to c8 after uh, rook to f1 we have bishop to g7 you see uh, black is trying now to get rid of this bad bishop situation then continue with this powerful bishop on c8 and maybe if the position allows it to play the move f5 in the game bishop takes g7 after king takes g7 we have f4 and now we have to protect of course our dark squares here after e takes f4 we have queen to f4 and now rook to a7 very nice move we are protecting our uh f7 pawn but still we are waiting this knight to come on the light square when that happens then we'll simply take out the knight and still white is continuing the game with the bad bishop so here in the game bishop to uh, d3 was played white is desperately trying now to get this bishop into the game we have b4 you see c4 and again if we watch this pawn structure it's again further blocked it's even more blocked than it was a couple moves before and still this is i think a better position for black because we still have an open diagonal for this uh, bishop and, and as i said <coughs> as i said in the beginning of the video the knights in this blocked pawn structures will always find a way into the game we can find some path for the knight even if the position is too blocked out we will find probably a way to cement the knight maybe here on e5 d4 so that's why here in the game queen to e7 a calm move by oleg uh, romanishin not allowing maybe some e5 pawn breakthroughs and we have now rook to uh, uh rook to f2 and now 
a uh, a4 so the idea behind this move is to open somewhere to position still the position in the center hasn't changed so that's the most important thing we shouldn't allow uh, some changes in the center if this bishop comes into the game then suddenly white i think has a better position because white has built this very powerful battery on the f file here bishop to c2 we have a queen to d8 we have knight to f3 and now f6 simply cementing the position never allowed this knight to come uh, here on g5 and also on e5 so again we're waiting to, uh, for a positional trades of pieces we want to give up the bishop uh, for this knight on f3 and maybe cement our knight here on e5 in the game uh, here g4 was played uh, rook to f uh, rook to f8 we have rook to g2 uh, queen to e7 king to h2 and now after a takes b3 a takes b3 and now finally this idea knight to d7 now basically every every trades of peace for black is good because uh, this pawn structure of white as i said all of these pawns are on light squares again in our bishop uh, bishop knight and pawn strategy this is a bad bishop position uh, still we can go into another positional trades of pieces if we get this the knights of the board then uh, we continue the game with an active bishop white is continuing the game with a bad bishop but um, the problem for white is now that you cannot uh, attack the dark squares anymore you don't have any more pieces uh, and still i believe that um, oleg romanishin saw all of these moves uh, before he played them he really realized this uh, the idea and the position very well here in the game uh, a4 was played by um, uh, arthur pipers and now comes knight to e5 we have knight takes e5 and now after um f takes uh, e5 we have now uh, trades of uh, queens and after rook to f8 king to f8 we have rook to f2 and now king to e7 here it's very important now to stay with the rooks on the on the board because uh, if we trade off too many pieces uh, we still have uh, to have some attacking pieces we don't want to go into into too much simplified uh, endgame now with the rooks on the board we can of course occupy somehow maybe here uh, the second rank the first rank this bishop is perfectly fine it attacks the weakness but again i'm pointing out this bishop on c2 is uh, very very bad so here bishop to uh, d1 was played rook to a1 attacking the bishop uh, rook to d2 and now rook to c c1 rook to d3 and now very important rook to c3 because we want to create a pass pawn situation very important thing to create a pass pawn here on c3 uh, rook takes c3 b takes c3 and now g5 uh, black uh, pardon me white is desperately trying to make something happen here but it's a symmetrical pawn structure nothing can happen no pawn moves are good here anymore on on the king side here king to d8 was played uh, king to g3 and now king to c7 we have king to f3 uh, king to b6 and now king to uh, e3 very important move now king to h4, uh, a5 king to d3 and now king to b5 very uh, before pardon me very important move now to support this pawn you see this is a uh, weak pawn here on b3 in the game uh, king to c2 was played and now bishop to h3 now this bishop comes very actively to the game we have now two new targets in the position it's the pawn on e4 and it's of course the pawn here on b3 bishop to f3 and now bishop to f1 here bishop to uh, h1 was played and now comes a very very nice move you can pause the video and maybe try to find the winning move here for for black in the game um oleg romanishin found the move bishop to d3 and in this position white resigned so you see how it it was important to realize the ideas the bad piece on the board uh the pawn structure uh, what pawns are on light squares what pawns are on dark squares so this is now as i said our first exercise let's see uh, also possible continuation after king takes uh, d3 we have king uh, king takes b3 and now there's nothing you can do this pawn will promote to queen and it was game over uh as i said this was our first exercise we'll also make some more exercises about this idea to realize your positions by the strength of the knight pawn structures and uh, uh, the strength of the bishop with some more dynamic games you see how sometimes it's very easy to understand the position if you watch it from a different view when you don't take care so much uh, about your queen's rooks 
of course you have to as i said play with your queens and the rooks but uh, so far in this game i believe you saw that it was really all about knights bishops and pawns and this will be i think a very important series as i said in the beginning of my youtube chess channel okay okay i hope that you realize these ideas and i hope that you enjoy this video meanwhile you can watch my first video from this uh, from the series of this knight bishop and pawn strategy uh, if you want to see more strategies and opening principles, you can also check out my basics in chess series. Uh, here's the link and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content. See you soon with some more videos and uh, chess is the best of course.